Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ADRS Toots. This series of videos will cover all of the features in contact. We'll continue with the browser. The database tab. The contact database lets you find the files you want quickly. It stores and manages information about all contact items that exist in your system. The database uses metadata to keep track of all your files. The database tab appears as a two section view the attribute list at the top and the results list at the bottom. The results list is constantly updated with all the objects in the database that match the search criteria and the attributes list. At the top of the database tab, you'll find a row of control buttons. Database options. This opens the database tab of the options dialog. And also the instrument navigator. This shows or hides the instrument navigator. At the top of the attribute list, you'll find the type buttons. These narrow search queries down to certain kinds of contact objects. The results list will only show objects of the types that are highlighted. Multi, bank, and instrument can be selected simultaneously, while you can only choose one of group, sample, or preset. This is because group, sample, or preset changes what's being displayed in the attributes list. Between the attributes list and the results list is the text search bar. This allows you to search for keywords inside the current results list. This will further refine the query defined by what's selected in the attribute list. So if you want to search the entire database, make sure nothing is selected in the attribute list. When you select one or more entries from the results list, the edit button will be enabled allowing you to edit attributes. Building the database. To populate the database, you add volumes or directories to the database options. Contact will scan these locations and the retrieved information will be added to the database. Contact will keep the database updated whenever you save or load a file or manually perform a scan. Once your collection has been added to the database, you can search for instruments, multis, banks, groups, presets, and samples. Contact has the following predefined attribute types. Author, this is the person who created it. Bank name, the instrument bank of the library. Timber, the timber of the sound. Instrument type, which is a two-level classification of the instrument family. And vendor. This identifies the distributor of the library. The attribute list acts as a filter and allows you to search for these attributes in your collection. The order of the column in the attributes list is important. Contact processes the filters from left to right. Each column only displays attributes that exist with the filters selected in the previous column. You can also add or remove columns. Right click on a column name to change the attribute sets of the current column or to remove the column. You can also switch the mode and multi select option. If or mode is enabled, the result will include the files that match any of the attributes selected in this column. And if and mode is enabled, only files that match all of the selected attributes will be selected. If 
If multi-select is enabled, you can select multiple attributes from the list. And if single select is enabled, clicking on an attribute will deselect any others in the same column. You can still add to a selection by control or command clicking. To reorder the columns, remove all of them and then add them back in the order that you would like them to be in. And to add an additional column, click on a plus sign. When the filters don't give you the results you are looking for, or you want a specific search, use the search bar. Text you enter here will be used as an additional filter. The search occurs as you type and you can search for multiple keywords at once by entering words separated by spaces. The order of the words doesn't matter. Contact will search inside all attributes even the ones not currently visible. So the search bar can be extremely powerful as you can search for things such as file paths, library titles, or comments. On the right side of the text search bar is the search results and the X button. The X button will reset the current filter and clear the text search bar. The results list can be configured to display only the information you are interested in. Right click a column header to add or remove columns. When you add a column, it will appear to the left of the one which you open the drop down menu. You can change the order by dragging the column header to the left or to the right. The column widths can be resized by dragging the column header separator bar. And to change the sort order, click on a column header. The database concept requires that the majority of your content have metadata. While contacts libraries come pre-tagged, third-party libraries and your custom content does not. When you add this untagged content to your library, contact will derive basic metadata such as path, file name, and sample size. For the rest of the metadata, you'll have to add it manually. To assign attributes manually, Filter results list down to the items you'd like to edit by using the type button, attribute list, and search bar. Select the items in the results list, then click the edit button. You can also right click on any entry in the results list and choose edit from the menu. In the edit page, the top half consists of an attribute selection table where you assign attributes from predefined attribute sets. In the first column, you choose between attribute sets info and standard. The second column lets you choose between the respective lists of attribute sets selected in the first column. And the third column lets you choose the attribute. You toggle the assignment by clicking on an attribute and you can add a new attribute value by clicking on the Create New at the bottom of the list. Attributes currently assigned are indicated with a check mark next to their name. A black check mark means that the attribute is assigned to all selected objects. A gray check mark means that the attribute is, is assigned to some, but not all, objects. When you are done with the assignments and the data entered, click the Save button to make your changes permanent, or click Cancel to discard your changes. If you select one object in the results list, the bottom half of the edit page will contain a form with text boxes where you can enter free text. You can also assign attributes by dragging them from the results list onto an attribute in the attributes list.
the Monitor tab. The Monitor tab provides an overview of various aspects of your currently edited instrument. It shows an updated searchable list of groups and zones. It allows you to quickly include or exclude groups for editing and provides a context sensitive parameter view of the values of the last parameter touch across all groups. At the top are five buttons. The first, the first four will switch the view into different display modes and the last will show or hide the instrument navigator. Groups. This view lists all groups in your instrument. It only works in instrument edit mode. The left column indicates that a group is marked for editing and can be clicked on to toggle the edit status of that group. On the right side is the group IDs displayed for reference when editing KSP scripts. Groups can be renamed by double clicking on their name and right clicking will display the edit menu which is the same as in the group editor. You can toggle quick search by clicking the magnifying glass and entering a name. You can hide and deactivate the quick search by clicking on the X. Zones. This view displays a list of all zones in the instrument across all groups. It works exactly like in the groups view. Double clicking the zone will open it in the wave editor. Parameter. When you switch to this view and touch the knob, The monitor pane will show the values of the parameter across all groups in the instrument or across all instruments in your multi if you are not in instrument edit mode. This is a great way to compare settings between groups. You can also change the values in the list by clicking their value and moving your mouse. And if the group doesn't contain the parameter, NA will be displayed. Engine. This displays an overview of system resources such as memory, event queues, additional latency, CPU load, DFD usage, and process buffer. The Restart Engine button allows you to reinitialize Contact's audio engine. Offline Bounce Mode allows hosts that don't fully work with Contact to be able to bounce or freeze tracks. And CPU Profiling Mode allows you to identify which parts of your instrument are consuming the largest amounts of processing power. Percentages are shown in the instrument name, the source module, and in the effects. In the instrument name, look at the rack to identify the most consuming instruments first, then switch to edit mode. At the source module, switch to a different HQI setting if the CPU usage is still too high. Group inserts. Group effects are calculated per voice. If the usage is too high, move memory intensive effects that don't use modulators to the instrument insert. Instrument inserts and sends. If the usage is still too high, move memory intensive effects to the output section. Put the insertion to the regular output channel and sends into the aux sends. So today we went over the database and took a look at the monitor. We'll continue on with the modules and the auto tab, quick load, and the output section. And don't forget to check out our website at www.contacttutorials.com for more tutorials on contact, ADSR contact tutorials, supercharger contact skills. So until next time, I'm going to make some music.